cool. It's loading up on YouTube real quick. Once we get this up, we can get started. All right, guys, cool. So we are live. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, Q&A. Uh, if you guys are new here, the Q&A, there's like a button on top and you can click on that. And then you can, um, you know, put in any questions you guys have. I can look over any pairs. I can go over any strategies. Um, I know there's a lot of new people here that want me to go over the um, the daily US 30 strategy that we always apply every day. Um, and I'll show you guys how we, you know, we caught those, those trades today. So I'll go over those. Um, but if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. And then we can go over that. Let's put this over here real quick. see you there in case people can't get in from the link. All right, get this on the indices as well. <laughs> I'll pull it straight up, but I have to learn from Azik. Yeah, and our Azik knows some coding too. So he could probably help you with some stuff if you're looking for anything specific. Uh, one last thing, let me just get this on the Facebook. All right, cool. Angel said, can you look at NAS? So we'll take a look at that first. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any other questions, you know, feel free to put them in the Q&A and then we can go over it. I don't really have much of an agenda today because the market's been pretty slow. So we're just going to go off, um, you know, we're just going to go off the fly and then we'll see what we'll look at. Um, and then we can take a look at the uh, US 30 entries from today and yesterday for both London and US. Since a ton of people are interested in like figuring out how we trade that. But you know, it's the same strategy, the same K2 daily US 30 strategy that we've been applying for, I mean, I don't even know how long. We've been doing that since May. It's been pretty accurate. All right, cool. So we got this on the Facebook. I'm trying to think if there's any other place that I forgot where to post this. Uh, but yeah, I think we should be fine. I mean, if anyone has any questions, I'll just check the, um, check this out. All right, cool. So Angel wants us to take a look at, at NASDAQ. So we're going to pull up NASDAQ real quick. Let's see. So I'll just draw my zones on the 30 minute just to get, you know, a bigger picture as to how it's moving. And then we can go ahead and analyze it on the shorter time frames. So basically the, the way I analyze my charts, what I do first is I pull up the A2SR indicator, the version two. And this will pretty much plot all of the um, closest support resistance on the chart for us. So once we have this, uh, we can understand what price is going to be rejecting from. So obviously you can see that big drop right here and then it rejected off the same support that was established on the eighth, two days ago. So you can see it's a strong support. It's basically like a double bottom here. I mean, it's not a full on double bottom, but it did reject off the same support. So once I have that, I'll pull up the rectangle tool and then I'll just draw my own zones over the K2SR so I can clean up the chart. So there we go. And the most important ones are gonna be the ones closest to current price, obviously, because um, you know price is down here. Once price gets you know up here or down here, then you know those will become of importance. But currently, um, they're not too important because price isn't here yet. But we'll be taking a look at those as well. Let's mark these up right here. And it's real simple, guys. It's not that hard. I mean, a lot of people have trouble, you know, plotting support resistance on the chart, or I guess supply and demand zones. But if you guys have the K2SR, you know, it makes it so easy where you don't have to really do anything. Uh, you literally just mark up where they're already plotted. So as you can see right here, you know, they're very clean rejection points. So obviously price came here, came down, and it literally rejects off these same points. Um, same situation right here, like this double bottom I just mentioned. So what I see happening right now for NASDAQ is I probably see it coming upwards to here. And then I probably see it coming back down because it looks like it's stuck within this range right here, unless it breaks above. So let me turn on the pivot. So this is another addition that I add on. I add on the pivots to see where price is trending. So obviously you can see right here that price is trending downwards. So there are a couple of scenarios that can happen with NASDAQ. So with NASDAQ, it could either 
reject off the K2 pivot right here and come back down, or the second pivot and come back down, or it can go up and test the K2SR zone and come back down. There's three different scenarios there, um, but it does have a sell bias right here. Uh, and the reason for that is the price is below the pivots. The pivots are all angling downwards and they're all spread out. So as you can see right here, when price was in that same situation right here, you can see it's the same pattern. So just looking at this right here. So this area over here, it's basically, or no, it's right here. So from right here to right here, you can see that price came down, rejected up, and then came back down to correct to the overall trend. It's the same situation right here. Price is coming down. and then it rejected just like it did right here. So it, it lines up perfectly. It came down, it rejected off this point, and then it shot back up and it's probably gonna come back down. So me personally, I'd probably give NASDAQ a sell bias, uh, especially because everyone's selling off. I mean, it, you know, I don't see this drop stopping anytime really soon. Uh, you know, obviously it's gonna correct at some point, but I don't know when that point's going to be. Like, I don't think it's going to continue up. I think it, it's probably going to continue down or it's going to range sideways until, you know, it either shoots down or it shoots up. Because what could happen here is it could reject off the pivot, well, pivot one, pivot two, or the K2SR and come back down, or it could break above it and continue upwards. Um, but we're not really sure what could happen there. So let me just pull up the, uh, the IG sentiment right now. I'm just going to see if there's... Um, you know, if there's more buyers or more sellers. So if you guys are familiar with the IG sentiment, basically what you do is you just Google IG sentiment as 100, and then you can pull it up right here. And then you can see where the majority of people are trading. Generally, you don't want to trade where everyone's trading because that's how you get stopped out or you get tricked um, because the banks aren't going to trade in the same direction of, as the majority um, unless it's, you know, it's super clear that price is supposed to be going that direction. So obviously right here, there's 61% of people long I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be part of that 61% because the thing is um, a lot of people are anticipating it to come up. So if you trade where everyone else is trading, you know, the banks aren't going to, they're, they're not going to let you guys win so easily. They're probably going to shoot price up and then they're going to spike it down super hard to stop everyone out because people don't have the margin to handle, you know, a big move for indices. So obviously they'll probably push price up a little bit, like I mentioned up to here. And then they'll probably spike it way down here to pretty much stop everyone out. Cause this is a big move. So if it comes up here and it spikes down, that's like a 1500 pit move right there. You know, a lot of people don't have the big capital to, uh, to handle these drops. You know, some people do, but majority don't. So the thing is I would probably wait for price to react off one of these pivots or, um, off the K2SR. There is a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different scenarios, like I mentioned. You know, price can either come up to the first pivot, second pivot, or the K2SR, or it could even break above higher. It can break above to you know the higher levels before coming down. But I don't think it's gonna shoot up for you know a long period, at least not yet. Maybe next week, but I don't think so this week because it's such a huge drop, and there's so many people that are trying to predict, you know, the the correction. But if you look across the board. You know, NASDAQ has actually been pretty bearish since the second. A lot of people were, you know, anticipating it to shoot up. I mean, if you're scalping, that's cool. But looking at it from a bigger perspective, um, you know, on the 30 minute chart on the intraday, it still looks like it's coming down. It looks like it's just coming up temporarily for now. Uh, Diamond said, what is the name of the site again where I can see the percentage of people trading? Uh, Diamond, so just go, go on Google and then search IG sentiment. And then you could put in the pair next to it. And then it'll pull up um, the page for it. So this is US Tech. This is um, equivalent to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, or if you want to look at you know US 30, you can see what all the um, what all the indices are doing. So we'll look at US 30 right here. See, there's an imbalance because so let me go to S and P. Because some people are, are like middle ground, while some people are are going one way. So, looking at Nasdaq, sixty one percent sixty one percent of people are you know anticipating it to bounce back up. For U.S. thirty, 
it's it's like right down the middle it's 51 percent. so for us 30 this can literally go you know either direction um let's look at the s p because the s p usually trails the yeah and the s p is about the same it and and it, it's kind of weird because there's more short sellers for um us 30 but there is more buyers for s p so there's you know people are trading in, in, in opposite directions for for a asset that usually moves in the same direction. So, um, you know, these are risky assets to trade because you don't, you really don't know where, where it's going to go, uh, you know, depending where the majority of people are trading, you know, the banks are probably going to trade the opposite. So this is something that you should probably keep in mind. I mean, this isn't going to be the main factor. You know, you shouldn't just bet on it because you want to go against what the majority of people are doing. Cause like I mentioned, um, for NASDAQ, it could push up pretty far. It, it's probably not going to push up like way up, you know, correct way up here, but it could push up decently far because what the banks want to do is they want to, you know, it's, it's a psychological game. What they're doing is they want to give people hope. <laughs> they want people to buy and hope that's going to come up. But when you least expect it, it's going to just drop down like it did right here. You know, nobody saw this drop coming. Um, we only saw it because we had the K2 indicator. So, you know, if we have the, if you're using the momentum indicator, you would have saw this drop coming, obviously. Um, and then we can go over the K2 strategy. Like I mentioned, you know, basically some people apply it on the 30 minute, some people apply it on the 10 minute. I personally apply it on the 10 minute. So I go on the 10 minute here. And you know, what we do is we basically wait for momentum to, to push price once the market opens. So um, I'll just put a line where the market opened. So the market opened right here at 6.30 AM. This is when the New York Stock Exchange opened. And once we got the momentum signal here for a sell, you know, a lot of people took this trade and made a lot of money. You know, there were a lot of people that were doing price action or whatever. They thought that price was going to go up, but it did the complete opposite. That's why like, uh, you know, I go with momentum. I don't like to trade off, you know, other other factors. Um, I mean, I, li I like to take consideration, but you know, you obviously want to trade in the direction of momentum. So I think a lot of people took this trade right here. I'll go over the US 31 that we took earlier, but just looking at the NASDAQ right here, this was using the K2 US uh, 30 strategy, but on a different indice. Um, and obviously went straight to TP right there. I wish I held on to it, but unfortunately I didn't. <laughs> so um, just looking at where price is right now, you know, they're probably going to push price up a little further and maybe go sideways for a bit to keep people guessing. It's all psych it, it's a psychological game. They want to keep people guessing where price is going to be going. So they'll probably move it a little bit to the side, push it up a little bit. And then once it reaches the K2SR, it'll probably reject off and come back down. Um, but there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different ways to analyze this. Uh, anonymous attendee said, which time frame is the indicator most effective on? So it just really depends on what you're trying to trade. So obviously, you know, each strategy has different requirements. If you're applying the daily US 30 strategy, where we just take one trade a day, um, right on market open. So we wait for the market open. We take the first momentum swing in that direction. And then we pretty much ride that wave. Um, this works best on the 10 minute. But some people apply it on the five minute if they want to get more entries or they want to get an earlier entry. Um, or some people apply it on the 15 minute where you have a little bit of a more accurate entry, but it might be a little too late. So if you enter late, then you might miss you know a huge move. So like here's the entry here for the um for the 10 minute. We'll look at the five minute. We'll see where the entry was there. Actually, I'm gonna mark it up so that we can match it up and see where where the entry was. So this is going to be the 10 minute entry right here. We'll go on the five minute. Uh, see, if you had the five minute, you would probably would have gotten a better entry because the, the first candle was right here. I mean, the first signal. So if you um, were applying it on the five minute, you would have made a little more profit right here. So instead of getting in down here, you would have gotten up here for, you know, an extra 400, 500 pips. The, the difference with this is that there's just more risk because if you enter too early, you might get screwed as well. Um, you know, it, it's a double-edged sword. They'll give you more entries, but it's a little riskier because it's on the shorter time frame. Uh, but if you look on the 15 minute, let's see where that was. 
So the 15 minute was late, just like I mentioned. So, you know, the 10 minutes, a good sweet spots in the middle, it gives you a good entry, um, which is just about right. And it's usually pretty accurate as well. You can see here, this would have won as well, but you would have missed out on, on like 500 or 600 pips. So, you know, give or take it, it, it goes either way, just depends on how you want to apply it. Me personally, I always recommend the 10 minute because the 10 minute gives you the best of both worlds. Um, it gives you a good entry and it's also a lot more accurate than the five minute. Um, we've taken the five minute before and it hasn't played out well. So that's why I don't really recommend going on the five minute. Um, that's more so if you want to scalp it, like on a very short time frame. but the 10 minutes pretty good for the daily entry. So Angel, this is pretty much what I see happening right here for NASDAQ. Uh, more so because there's a lot of long clients. So let me see. There's 61% of people are buying. Let me see if it updated. Uh, same thing. So it's still, there's still a lot of people that are um, banking on it to go up. So the problem with that is, <clears throat> the problem with that is, like I mentioned, they're going to keep pumping it up a little just to give people a little gimme so people have hope. But when you least expect it, it's going to come crashing down. So I would be careful if you're trading NASDAQ. Uh, but if you are applying, so let's see, if you're applying at the pivot strategy or something like that, uh, it, it's actually going to line up pretty perfectly. Uh, Angel, I know you're familiar with the pivot strategy. So, you know, basically once price, we have uh, the downtrend right here, confirmation. Uh, we have the rejection, right? Oh, we have the retracement right here. And then once we have a rejection here and we get a sell signal, you can enter a sell. Real easy. It's basically what happened over here. So let me um just hide everything over here real quick, just so I can show you guys. So basically the way that the K2 uh, pivot strategy works is you want to identify downtrends. Right here, price was trending down. Then you want to identify a retracement. So price was trending down, retracement, rejection, sell signal. Once you get that sell signal, or you could even enter this one right here because this was a little too early. So basically price was trending down. Let me just, I'll put the requirements here because I know there's a lot of people here that aren't familiar with it yet. K2 pivot strategy. One, identify the trend using the K2 pivots. Two, identify the, identify a, what was it, retracement. Pullback. Three, identify a, Projection off K2 pivot. And then lastly, identify a valid K2 signal. And then you can enter on the open of the following candle. Too many L's. Following candle. Smaller. And it's that simple. So basically, you know, what we're doing here is we want to identify the trend. So if we rewind here, identify the trend um, using the K2 pivot. So if price is below the pivots, um, let me just hide. Actually, I can't hide this stuff. If I hide, it's going to delete it. So you want to identify the, I'll just delete it. It's kind of relevant right now. So you want to identify the trend using the K2 pivots right here. If price is below the pivots, um, you can you can justify a downtrend. Similar right here, when price is above the pivots, the pivots are angling up, and they're all spread out. It's a nice uptrend. Similar in the opposite direction, if price is below the pivots, the pivots are angling down and they're spread out. You can consider that a downtrend. So first, we identified the trend uh, using the K2 pivots. Next, you identify the retracement. So price was coming down, it retraced off this point right here, and then it shot up. Third, you want to identify a rejection of the K2 pivot area. So right here, there's a rejection of the K2 pivots, and then it came back down. Lastly, you want to identify a valid K2 signal. So right here, you can see that we have a valid K2 signal over here. And this is valid because it's a sell signal with a red bearish candle. Um, this would be a valid buy signal, but it's against the trend. That's why I didn't push up too far. It's more so of a, of a pullback or a tracement signal. So, once all the requirements are met, we have the downtrend, retracement right here, rejection right here, valid K2 signal. You can enter on the open of the falling candle. So right here, we enter a short position, put a stop loss at the previous swing right here. 
or it probably would be up here actually. So this is probably the previous swing up here. And then if you have all, all that lined up, you can let it run. And then you can see there, full TP. So same situation right now, Angel, this is what I'm looking for currently because, so we do have a sell signal right there, but it has to be valid. So if it's a red sell signal um, right there, it would, it would provide for a good sell entry. So if anyone's looking at you know, NASDAQ right now, this might be a good opportunity to enter a sell, um, but it would have to close. So right here, this is going to close in about, it still has nine minutes in this candle. So it's going to take some time, but if it does close, that'd be a good short position right there. If you guys want to take it, um, you know, I know uh, not everyone here has the, uh, the indicators, but if you guys do, I know you do have it angel. So if you're looking at this, um, you know, it'd probably be good if you're, if you're watching it, but, um, yeah, we'd have to wait about eight minutes because the, it would have to close in order for it to be valid. You can see right there that a red signal showed up, but then it disappeared. So the, the indicator repaints, but it, once it closes, it doesn't repay anymore. So once it closes, it'll show up like this and then you can take it. Um, but we'll have to give it some time. It still has about, yeah, eight, seven minutes left. Um, but yeah, so that, that's my bias for NASDAQ. I do have a sell bias for it. So if you guys are looking to enter NASDAQ, um, don't just enter a sell just just because I would enter a sell, you know, based on on your strategy. It doesn't have to be the K2 strategy. If there's a different strategy that identifies an entry, then you can enter a sell for NASDAQ. But um, you know, if you're applying the K2 pivot strategy, this would be a valid entry right here. Let's see, Ken said, 15 NASDAQ, would you not have placed your stop higher than you did? Um, 15 minute NASDAQ. Let me go on the 15, Ken. see can are you talking about the uh, the daily us 30 entry right here so if we were ending the daily right here put my stop loss up here at the swing so it'd be about 1700 pips uh and it would have worked out perfectly about it, it was about the same area as the other one as the other entry uh, there was probably just a little more leeway uh, with a 10 minute. So if I go on the 10 minute here, yeah, it's about the same thing on the 10 minute bro. But, um, the only difference is that the entry was a little, it was a little later because you missed that on like 600 pips right here. But I mean, like I, like I mentioned, you know, 15 minutes is, is a little bit more accurate. So it just really depends on how you want to apply it. But yeah, I mean, the, the swing would be about the same. So the swing here is at one, one, five, six, six. And then same situation on the 10 minute swings at the same exact spot. It, so it, 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 it technically would have been a little bit farther back because you have this gap right here um, versus, you know, on the 15 minute, but it'd be in the same um, price point. So Angel said, so it's good to intercept NAS for a sell now. Um, not yet. So I would wait for it to close. So we'd have to wait for it to close Angel for a sell signal like it did right here. So once this closes, you know, if we get a sell signal here, I know there's a pending one, but if we get one that, um, <clears throat> sorry guys. <clears throat> yeah, if we get one right here that um, closes below for a sell, then yeah, we would take it. But I would wait for it. Uh, we still have six minutes on this candle. Uh, and you're, you're familiar with, with you know, watching the, the signal. It, it, it'll disappear. So you'd have to wait for it to close. We don't know if it'll close for this candle or if it'll close for the next you know, one, two, three, four candles. So that could be some time. Um, it's only four o'clock. So the market's really, it's going to be slow right now. The Asia market barely open. And you guys are familiar with how Asia, you know, moves. It's super slow, but you can see right here, it's rounding off. So price came down, rejected, and then it retraced up this way. And then it rejected off this top right here, but it's moving super slow. So I'm not even sure if, if we'll get a sell signal right now, but if it does close, then it'd be a valid entry. Yeah, that looks that looks like about it for Nasdaq. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll keep the uh, I'll keep my alerts on Angel. So if we do get an alert for Nasdaq, then I can go back and look at it. And I can give you confirmation that it's a good entry. There we go. 
And if you guys aren't familiar with the alert, so basically, you know, if you want to get a signal for whenever like a K2 signal appears, you can just go to alerts, click on K2TS, and then you can do buy signal, sell signal. I usually just pick signal fired because I want to know when, when both signals come up. And then you can just type in your message here for it to come up. So NASDAQ 100, K2 signal. And that's about it. So if that signal appears, I'll get a alert and then we can come back and look at it. Uh, but right now, Hamdi wants us to take a look at gold. So we're all done with NASDAQ at the moment. We'll come back to it, uh, you know, if we get a signal or something like that. So let's go on the um, on the four hour, I'll pull up gold right now. All right, cool. So gold is in a, it looks like it's in a downtrend. So like I mentioned, uh, what I like to do first is I like to plot out my zones so that I know where not to trade. Because obviously you don't want to trade in areas where, you know, there's a higher probability of rejection. So I'll draw my zones right here. Draw my zone right here. Another zone right here. See, this is a problem. When there's when there's price that continues to reject within an area, it just becomes harder to identify, you know, where's a dangerous area to trade. Because obviously you don't want to trade where price is rejecting from. But once we have this, we could, um, so first we identify the zone so we know where price is rejecting from. And then after that, we will identify where, so I'll close this. So now we know where the rejection points are. So you can see there from a clean chart, you can see price, you, like price is likely to reject from these points. So price came up, came down, rejected off here, came up, rejected off this point. So it looks like it could be coming down farther. So it might come down like to there. Uh, since we have this lined up here, we can probably just close or we'll just leave it up for now, but it does have, it looks like a sell bias because, so if you were to plot your own trend, trend line, uh, you know, it's obviously in a downtrend, but to make things easier, I just use the K2 pivots. So you can see right here, price is trying to come back down. So price is pretty much in consolidation within this range. So I could just delete this point. Uh, what it looks like, looks like price is in consolidation within these, this range right here. So price pretty much has just been going sideways for uh, gold, but it did reject off this K2SR right here. So since it rejected off this point, what might happen is price might come down, test this point, and it could either break below it, or it can reject off it and come back up and then just keep ranging. It'll pretty much, it seems like it'll probably range until it either breaks above or below. Let's see what the trend meter, the trend meter is um, indecisive down here. So the overall trend is neutral. Let's see the direction of momentum. So right here, we actually have a sell signal. Uh, the only problem is this candle is not gonna close for another hour and 30 minutes. So basically, for gold right here, if this closes, it's going to provide for a momentum swing downwards. You can see right here, see when price gives a momentum swing downwards and it's trending down, what happens is it pushes down to the next zone. So that's what I anticipate happening right here. I anticipate price, if this closes below this K2 pivot right here, then I anticipate it to push down to test the zone, similar to what happened right here. So once price comes down, it tests the zone. And once it tests it again here, that would be considered a double bottom, right? Because it tested right here and then it would have tested right here. So price could go one of two ways. It can either reject back up and go back into the range or it can shoot down further. Let's see how many points is this? Yeah, so, so I'd probably wait for this, Hamdi. So if you have access to the indicators, I would just watch the four hour candle and see if this closes. And then if it does, then you can probably ride this down or you know, it might be a little risky because it's so close to the zone right here. So it might reject off this point or it might come down and reject off the lower point. But there's a lot of different scenarios that can play out with gold. Um, you know, if we compare it to the US dollar, let's see how the US dollar is moving right now. Uh, your USD. 
it looks like the dollar is weak. So that's kind of weird because if the dollar is weak, then gold should be going up. Let's look at USD CAD. Huh. Actually, no, sorry, uh, opposite. So you know, I kind of confused myself there. So basically, if price is going down, like it's going down right here, that means that the US dollar is actually strong. So if the US dollar is strong, uh, you know, we can correlate these with other US pairs. So for your USD, um, since it's, if it's going down, the US dollar is, is, is stronger. Um, and then same situation with UCAD. So if UCAD is, is pushing up, upwards, that means that the US dollar is stronger than the CAD. So, you know, if they both correlate, that kind of gives off the impression that the US dollar um, is gaining in strength. So if the US dollar is gaining in strength, then that would justify our sell right here. So just, you know, watching this right here, if price continues to come down, that is going to justify the strength in the US dollar. So if price is going up here and price is going down here and price is going down here, this is going down a lot actually. So, you know, there's three different US pairs there and you can see that the US dollar is strong across the board. It's strong for your USD strong for GBP USD and strong for USD CAD. So, you know, if it's strong for all those major currency pairs, odds are it's probably gonna continue down for gold. So since all those pairs correlate, uh, that would give us more confirmation that price is going to be coming down. And if you guys are looking for, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, you could like search out my FX my FX book correlation. Because I know a lot of people are, are not familiar with the correlations. Um, you can just type that in on Google, my FX book correlation, and then it'll give you all the correlations right here. So if you want to look at the US dollar, um, you know, you can just look at USD and then see how everything correlates. So if you're looking at gold, you just type, uh, look up gold right here. You click on it and it'll show you what has absolute correlation and you know what's positive correlation, what's negative. And then if you want to match that up with, with you know what you see on the chart, if they're both moving in the same direction. So if you look at um, you know, these pairs right here and they're matching, then obviously price is going to continue in that in that direction. So that's kind of what I see happening right here, since the US dollar is strong across the board. Um, but we'd have to wait for it. It's just, you know, this candle is going to close in in an hour. So a lot of things can happen within an hour. Price can shoot up, price can come down. It just really depends on, you know, the direction of price once that candle closes. And then you can determine the direction and your entry if this closes with like a sell signal or something like that. Let's see, Ken says, so in this sell now, if it's valid, would your stop loss be at the, with the last pivot? Yeah, so basically, um, I mean, your stop loss is going to be very subjective. Uh, it just really depends on your risk. So if you're if you're able to handle risk where you can put your stop loss farther back, uh, the thing is I don't trade gold, so I don't know if this is too tight of a stop loss. Um, I don't know. It's like twenty one. I, I guess this would be like two hundred pips. So you know this could be your stop loss right here, if you were to enter the cell, or your stop loss could be up here. It just really depends because. I'm not familiar with gold because I don't trade it anymore. So I'm not sure if this is too far or if this is too close. So depending on, you know, on your uh, analysis of this, uh, because, I, you know, I'm not going to act like I know every pair because I don't trade everything. Uh, I know a lot of people like to act like they trade everything, but in reality, they don't. <laughs> and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give you guys bad information because I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I don't trade gold. So I don't know if this is too close or if this is too far. So just depending on, on your experience, if this is too close, then yeah, move it to the next, the next um, pivot up here. Oh, Ken said, no, question was for NASDAQ. I don't even, I don't trade gold neither. Yeah, I stopped trading gold because gold is, I mean, gold is like, it moves all over the place. A lot of people make a lot of money trading gold, but you never see people post losses. I know a lot of people blow accounts off gold because it's just such a weird pair and that's why I don't trade it. <laughs> and uh yeah, I mean, if you like to trade gold, then yeah, good for you. But it's just too risky for 
for me to trade because you know I, I like to have consistency and I like to be a conservative trader. So this is just too risky for you know my risk profile. But I'll go back to NAS real quick and I'll just I'll I'll go over that for you, Ken. But yeah, so if you guys are looking at gold, if this closes right here, then it would provide for you know probably a good sell entry. Um, but you just have to wait for it to close. It's about an hour, so we could probably look back at that at six, and then we can see if this confirms. So let me just go back to NASDAQ real quick. Where did I put it at? NASDAQ. All right, cool. So we were on the 10 minute. So yeah, Ken, if we were to enter a sell, so like, like I mentioned earlier, see that candle didn't close. Um, so you just have to wait for that sell signal. It's, it's all about patience because the last thing you want to do is enter a sell position and then price continues up. Uh, you just have to be really patient and wait for that entry. But if you were to enter this, can I think this, the, the swing would probably be, because this would be way too close, like 100 pips, that's way too close. Um, and this might be way too high. This is like three, let's see, so swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high. So this would actually be the swing right here for about 2000 pips. I guess it's not too bad if you really think about it because well, depending on where the entry is. So if the entry is, is pretty far off, then you might have a lot of cushion, but I could definitely see it drop to, you know, that point. You just gotta remember to, um, you know, move your stop loss and profit. So even if you were to enter at some point right here, as it comes down, you know, obviously you wanna move your stop loss and profit. And the way that I do it when I trade indices, cause they move so fast, I usually trail my stop loss with the pivots. So as the pivots move, I move my stop loss with it. So I'll just show you guys an example right here. So you guys can see what I mean by that. So like I mentioned earlier there, this was a, a pivot entry right here. Let's close these. So this was a pivot entry over here. And a stop loss would probably be, I think this would be too close. So I'd probably put it up here, the next swing. Uh, and what Ken was, what we and Ken are discussing is he was asking if, um, we would put our stop loss up at the last pivot. The thing with the pivot is, I mean, this would be a good pivot up here, but this might be a little too far. So generally I'd probably put my stop loss right here just so there's, you know, there's not a huge risk there. But as price moves, I usually move uh, my stop loss with it. So you can see right here, price as price moves down, what I do sometimes is I'll just remove my TP. So like right here, price came down and if I think price is going to continue down like really far, I just remove my my TP and I just, you know, unlimited TP right there. And what I do is I move my stop loss with the pivot right here. So I just follow the last pivot. And then as price continues down, you just move it with the pivot. So like in this situation, you could like maximize your, your profit. So at this point, you're at break even, you know, it's unlimited profit potential right there. And then my stop loss will be this ray right here. And then, like I mentioned, I just put it at one of, the, one of the last pivots. And then as price moves down, I just continue to follow through with it. Unless you want to take profit. I mean, you could take profit right here if you wanted to at the 1700 point, or you could continue to trail it. It's just really up to your risk profile. You know, everyone trades differently. Everyone's risk is different. So it, there's no one way to trade. There's no one way to exit a trade. It's, it's really up to you. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm a conservative trader. I like to lock in my profits. I don't like to lose. So I probably would have just taken profit here. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, everyone's different. So it's just really up to preference. Um, okay. So let's see what's next. Uh, diamond said, Sean, can you look in a GJ? So let me pull up GJ real quick. Let's take off all these indicators again. Go for our candles. Go to GJ. Oh, we're still in that cell right now, too. Yeah, so I have a small position right here for GJ. It's like a 0 0.10. This is my active live position right here on my forex.com account. For my forex.com account, I just take small positions now. I don't really take big positions because most of my money is made from trading US 30 now. So I usually put my focus in that and then my 
Forex wins or just extra profit. Like right here, I have like like 40 bucks in profit. Uh, you know, whenever I call a trade, I just enter the trade. And then if, you know, if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but it's, it's a good, um, it's a good reminder because if you have skin in the game, you'll you'll pay attention to the trade. It doesn't matter if it's like a few pennies, a few dollars, you know, a few hundred dollars. It'll um, it'll it'll still get your nerves going. Let's see, Cabbage said, when waiting for the close of the candle, what pivot level are we actually looking to confirm? Oh, gotcha, Cabbage. Yeah, Cabbage said my question was already answered. Gotcha. All right, cool. So let's keep going down. Um, so Diamond wants us to look at GJ. Uh, like I mentioned, I start off with a naked chart like this. First thing I do after that is I open the K2SR version two and I plot my zones just so I can see where price is likely to reject from. So generally, if price is, um, so if the zones are really close like this right here, I'll just delete this first so you guys can see. If the zones are too close, like it, it's, you know, there's not enough space in, in between for price to really move, I just create a bigger zone. So instead of just ha instead of having two small zones right here, I just merge them together for one big zone. So there's one big zone right there. Um, zone right there. And like I mentioned, you know, I'm still going to draw the zones up here, but they're not very relevant because price is so low. Like there's no way price is going to, you know, shoot up in a few minutes. And if it does, it'll probably come up and reject off the zone and then come back down. But, um, you know, the most important zones are going to be the ones that are closest to current price because we're only trading intraday. I mean, if you're swing trading, then yeah, it makes sense for you. But us intraday traders and swing traders and scalpers, uh, you know, these upper zones are just reminders for when price actually gets to that point. But it wouldn't really matter because we're updating our zones like every time we make an entry anyways for that extra confirmation. So yeah, looking at price now, they're the zones, they're all lined up right here. Uh, we're still currently in our cell. I think we hit TP2 already for that. So let me go to um, signals channel. Yeah, so we hit TP1 for uh, 25 pips. If you guys took that, some of you guys might have gone stopped out there uh, for a profit of, you know, if you're taking a standard lot, 250 bucks. Uh, and then we hit TP2 right here, somewhere in the middle. Uh, and if you're trading standard lot, that's 500 bucks. Um, and if you're going for the full TP down here, that'd be for about a thousand. So Right here, you know, obviously it's in a downtrend. You can tell it's in a downtrend just by looking at it because it rejected off this top point. But if you want to be extra sure, you turn on the pivots. Price is in a strong downtrend. See, you can see here prices below the pivots. Price came up, rejected off the pivot, and came down pretty strong. Came up, rejected, came back down strong again. So what might happen here is, you know, price is just going to go up a little bit and then come back down hitting our full profit right here. Um, generally, I get out, uh, like I move my stop loss and profit, but the market's been so good lately where I'm just letting it run. I'm not even adjusting my stop loss anymore. So that's why I'm still in this trade. Technically, I probably would have gone out because once it hit TP2 down here, I would have moved my stop loss and profit and then I would have gone stopped out in profit. But um, with how the market's moving, I'm just gonna let it run. So right here, what could happen here is price will probably come down and then it might establish a double bottom right here. So you can see this bottom was established right here. So as price comes down, price, once price gets to this point, it could do one of two things. It can either continue downwards or it could reject right up and then maybe correct to the overall trend. But I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see how that happens. It's kind of weird because the US dollar is strong right now so you wouldn't expect the, the yen to be strong. I'm not sure if the, the pound is just super weak right now. That's kind of what it seems like looking at the other pairs. So if you look at um, GC over here, I wonder why I still have this lined up. Do we have an active trade there? I think we had TP already, that's why. Yeah, because I haven't marked, usually if I haven't marked, that's an active trade, but I'm not really, let me see. 
Oh, duh. Okay, we hit full TP already. So we hit full TP for that trade, 48 pips, uh, which was equivalent to $480 if you're trading a standard. So that was our entry right there. Obviously, it would have hit. So let me just uncheck that. Um, but I'm just doing the correlation. So I'm looking at all the GBP pairs. It looks like the pound is weak across the board. So that's why I think GJ is a good sell because you can see here, the pound is weak. It's like literally getting beat. Like GA, it's coming down. GC, it's coming down. GC, ECF, it's coming down. GJ, it's coming down. So, you know, this gives you strong confirmation that price is going to continue downwards. So this looks good here. So, um, yeah, Diamond, I'm not sure if you're in that trade with us. Are, are, are you in that trade? Because I did share that with a premium and I did share it with the public. So I think everyone is, almost everyone's in this trade, um, which could be, you know, good for everyone. So, yeah, there's not much to look at here. So if we go on the shorter time frame, so let me go like on the 10 minute for scalping, uh, there's actually a sell signal here. So like I mentioned earlier with the pivot strategy, you know, price comes down, retraces from this point, projects from this point, sell signal. This is a sell right here. Boom, there you go, full TP for like 50, 60 pips. Same situation right here. Price came down, retraced from this point, projection off this point, sell signal. So there goes another sell entry right there. So Diamond, if you want to enter this for late entry, if you're not already in it, it's actually a nice pivot entry right there. And a lot of you guys are a lot of you guys are already familiar with the strategy. You know, whoever has access to the K2 indicators, um, or if you guys want to learn the strategy, it's super simple. Like if you go on the YouTube page, it's on the YouTube, um, and it's also on the course. So if you go on the course, it's right here under the K2 pivot scalping strategy. But you can use this on all time frames. So entry day swing trading, it's really up to you. Um, but yeah, so Diamond, if you're looking to enter this trade, looks like it's there's another sell entry available right now if you want to enter it for a late entry. But I still see it as a sell bias and I still see it coming down to close to full TP, if not, you know, to this zone at the very least. Um, because it'll establish a double bottom down here, but there's a double bottom is like way down here. So it'll probably hit our TP before it, you know, comes down to this point. So it looks good overall. Um, so yeah, that's it for GJ. Let's see. All right, cool. One question from Pipes. Pipes said, could you do Euro NZD and US 500? Okay, so let's look at Euro NZD right now. I'm gonna go back to my testing charts. Take everything off the chart. There we go. We got a naked chart right there. Pull up Euro NZD. So we're currently in a buy right now, I believe, right? Let me pull up the actual official chart. Yeah, so we're currently in a buy. I think for this, I actually moved my stop loss. So I got out at TP2 down here. So I called this trade um, earlier today. Yeah, so it's it's the same exact trade. Let's see, I'll just move this over. Uh, you can see here price came up, came, came down, and came up right here. Um, and that is... But, you know, this is a different trade. Euro NZD. Oh, duh. Okay, sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. I was like, why does it look like that? It's just, uh, I was looking at, at the NZD CHF right here. So this is the uh, Euro NZD that I called earlier today. You know, same entry right here. We call this, it hit TP2 for 50 pips, which was halfway mark. That's where I got out. Um, but I know a lot of people are still in this trade. So just going back to, so this is what the chart looks marked up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I mark that up. So start from the beginning, naked chart, open the K2SR, and then identify the rejection points. So there's one right here, one right here. And the reason I do this first is because I don't want to be trading where prices is you know going to reject from obviously you know if you're taking a buy here you don't want to enter buy when it's way up here because if it's way up there it's probably going to come down same situation if you're entering a sell so if you're entering a sell and there's a zone right here you know obviously you're not going to be entering that sell if you're right at this very bottom because if price is at the very bottom it's probably going to shoot up like it did right here um 
but yeah, so I'm going to mark up these zones real quick, just so that we know where price is probably going to reject from. Uh, I think that's about it. I mean, for the most part, like the, these lower ones, like I mentioned, they're kind of irrelevant because we're not, um, you know, price isn't down here, so it's not really going to affect us very much. But I'll just mark it up just for reference. It's always good to know just in case. Um, okay, cool. So I'll take off the SRs once we have that marked up. You know, once we have that marked up, we know where price is rejecting from. You can see how clean the chart looks now. So price comes up, rejects, comes down, rejects, double bottom, shoots right up. Same situation right here. I think this was like a head and shoulders right here. So there's the head, shoulders, that's why it came down. Um, so here's the thing. If you guys have all these indicators, then you could you know tie this in with your own strategy. You have like such a good chance of like hitting the trade that you're looking for because it gives you so many confirmations. Like if you're doing price action, you see this head and shoulders, um, you know, it's kind of hard to see without the without the zone. So if I take the zones off, you know, it's kind of hard to see. But if you have the zone there, it's so clear. It's a clear head and shoulders. So right here, if you saw this, you would have taken a sell and then price rejected off this point. And now it looks like it's correcting back upwards. So once we have these zones on the chart, what I do next is I turn on the pivots to see the direction of the trend. Obviously price was trending down right here, then price reversed from this point and then shot up. So we have a buy bias right here, obviously. So if you have a buy bias, you know, we're only gonna be looking for buy entries. So once we have identified the trend, we've identified the rejection points. Next, we can look at the momentum. Right here, we got a buy signal. So I think that's where we entered this one right here. See, that's where our entry started uh, because we took a pivot entry, the same strategy that I've been explaining since earlier. So right here, we have a buy signal indicating that price is going to continue upward. So if we have that confirmation right there, you know, odds are price is gonna come up and test this zone. And then once it tests that zone, it can either shoot up farther or it can reject back down. There's a, there's a ton of different scenarios, but for our situation, our full TP is right here. As you can see on our official charts, our full TP is right here. So even if it was to reject off that zone, we still hit full TP, which is perfect for us, you know, in and out. Uh, and that's how the K2 strategies work. You know, we look for an edge in the market. We take that edge. Once we lose the edge and it gets to a zone, we exit with profit. So that's my bias right there for Euro NZD. We've already hit TP2 on the way to full TP right here for how many pips? 100 pips, real nice. Um, but yeah, we're in Asia session, so it's gonna move slow regardless. It's probably gonna you know slowly make its way up. And then once it reaches London session, it's probably gonna you know skyrocket or shoot in like one of the other directions. It just we just really won't know until it gets to that point. But I do have a buy bias right here. So if you're looking to enter this trade pipes, um, you know, obviously it's a nice entry right there. I could even go on the lower time frame. So let me um, go on the 10 minute for scalping. And there you go. See, uh, same situation using the, the pivot strategy. Price came up, a uh, retrace from this point, rejection, buy signal. Write that thing up right there. It's probably going to go up, hit TP right there. So there goes Euro NZD. Uh, Justin said, could this be another US pivot entry of a signal? Uh, let's see on the four hour. Um, so right now it, it cur it's currently on a buy signal. So in order for us to get another buy signal, there would have to be a, a sell signal. So, you know, if we get a sell signal for retracement and then we get a buy signal, then yeah, it'd be a perfect entry for uh, using the K2 pivot strategy. But looking here on the 10 minute, the, the pivot entry is actually right here. So it's already been established and it's technically active right now. But if we get a sell signal like we did right here, which might happen, you know, it doesn't always go straight to TP. Sometimes it'll go sideways. So if you get a sell signal and then it comes down temporarily and then you get a buy signal following it, right there, then yeah, that would, that would classify as a valid US 30 pivot strategy. Um, and it's real simple. It's literally like, literally, like literally all you're doing is just 
me just delete these zones here. So basically what you're doing is you're just waiting for price to go above the pivots, retrace, reject, buy signal, winner, full TP right there. You just do it over and over again. Again, right here, price comes up, retracement right here, rejection, buy signal, another win. That's like within an hour, you would have locked in like 60, 70 pips right there. Um, but yeah, like right here with Euro NZD, it's just moving kind of slow. It's just, um, you know, we're in Asia session, so it's just going to consolidate, probably go sideways for a bit um, before actually shooting up. But we are in a buy sick. We're, we're currently in a buy. So I do have a buy bias, and I do think it's going to shoot on up. So if you want to scalp this up, go ahead and take all the scalps you want in, in the upwards direction because we still have a long way to go. From here to full TP, we have, you know, like 70 pips. That's probably going to count for like three or four scalps. So instead of locking in, you know, just 70 pips for this, you know, full move, you could pull in like one, or there's another scalp right here. You could have pulled in, you know, one, two, three, four, maybe five. So instead of doing 70 pips, you 35 times five, you lock in 175, you doubled your profit right there. Um, I mean, obviously it's going to take more work for you to scalp within a, you know, full move, but that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you have time and you want to make more money, then, you know, scalp within. That's usually what I do. So I'll like line it up on the four hour, then I'll go on the 10 minute and I'll just scalp within. And it's it, if you have time and you have focus and, you know, you're not going to screw anything up and over leverage, you, you can make a ton of money just scalping. Um, but okay, let's see. So we have, um, oh, Justin said on, on US 30. Let me pull up US 30 real quick. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. There's a uh, there's a lot of people that have been like killing it using the strategy. So let's see. Uh, let me look at the, um, I forgot who was doing it earlier. Yeah, these are funny. Who's that Pilat? <laughs> Tag team. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so James was using the pivot strategy right here on the 10 minute on the US 30. He went straight to TP. It's like super easy. Um, even Nico over here, Nico, he just, he opened this account today for 500 bucks. He flipped it. He's now at a thousand using the same exact strategy. It's like, it's, it's so easy. I don't know how, like, it's really hard for you, for people to get it wrong. Like even right here, price comes down, comes up, sell signal straight to TP. Um, but yeah, Justin, so Justin was asking if, um, if there's another valid, pivot sell. So yeah, if we get a sell signal right here, then I provide for a sell entry. And it looks like that could happen because um, price is going down across the board. So right here for NASDAQ. Uh, yeah, sorry, Angel. I don't know why I didn't get the alert for that, but um, or maybe I didn't, I just didn't notice it. But yes, so for NASDAQ, this is actually a pivot entry. So if anyone wants to enter this, um, you know, more than welcome. I would enter it, but I don't like entering trades where I can't, um, you know, actively monitor it. Since I'm looking at other pairs, it's gonna be hard for me to go back and forth to look at it. But you know, here's a little Easter egg for you guys if you guys want to scalp this down. It's a valid sell entry. Same same thing that happened over here. Same thing that happened over here. You know, two wins right there for a thousand pips each locking like 3000 pips. So this is probably going to come down pretty quick. Just make sure to, um, you know, manage your risk properly. Don't, I mean, you can let it run, but at least move your stop loss and profit once it gets to a certain point. Like if it's the halfway mark, move your stop loss and profit. Don't get greedy. Let's see. Oh, Angel actually saw on the five minute. So let's see. So I have this marked up right here on the 10 minute. Let's go on the five minute, see if it was closer. I don't know, same exact thing. So just looking at this too, Angel, this is what I mentioned. So, you know, if you go on the lower time frame, sometimes it matches up. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's a little off, but right here, this looks like a good sell entry on the 10 minute.
uh, Cabbage Kid said TP for NASDAQ. Yeah, NASDAQ TP is 11105. So it should be good for that. Um, but yeah, just remember to move your stop loss and profit, um, you know, once it pushes down. But we'll have to see because we're in Asia session. So the problem with Asia session is that price is price could literally go in either direction before correcting. So the real movement is going to come in in London. So once London opens, you're going to see the real movement. But during Asia session, it's probably going to go sideways. Then it'll probably just like consolidate and spike around. It, you know, honestly, this probably, this might not even move very much. It might literally just go sideways for the next what seven hours? It's only five o'clock. So London doesn't open for seven hours. So we're probably not going to see much movement until then. But you know, this technically this this would still classify as a valid pivot entry. But all right, let me go back to Pipes' question. He had one more question about um, US 500, which I'm assuming is, is S&P. Yeah, it should be S&P because US 100 is NASDAQ, US 500 would be S&P. It just depends on your broker. Um, so I'll take a look at that. And then after that, I'll take a look at your questions too, Lincoln. I see your question for uh, NZD USD and odd USD. Um, one question from Tony, does the pivot strategy work when you can't tell the general trend of the market like it's consolidating? Uh, no, Tony, so, I mean, it does work, but you know, this strategy, the first requirement is that you identify the trend. So if there's no trend, then there's no entry. There has to be a clear trend downwards or a clear trend upwards. Like you can see right here where price is crossing over, there's obviously no clear trend right here. So there would be no entry right here, even though, even though this shot up right here, um, you, we can go back and replay this. You can see that there was like no clear trend because in order for there to be, be a clear trend, price has to be above or below the pivots and the pivots have to be angling in the same direction and they have to be spread out. So as you can see right here, they're not really spread out, right? They're kind of just crossed over because price was trending up then it crossed down, then it crossed up, and then now it's just jumbled up right here. So in this situation, we wouldn't have taken this trade. Um, you can see there's a huge difference when price is trending. It's easier to catch these entries going up in that direction. Similar when it's coming down, price is trending down, there's uh, easy entries right here for sells. So if price is consolidating like it is right here, um, it would provide for no entry. I mean, you could technically take it if you really wanted to, but it wouldn't be a valid entry because obviously you want to trade when um, you know that when the trend is is pretty pretty obvious. All right, cool. So we got two questions for SMP. So we got one SMP question from Pipes and one SMP question from Lincoln. So we'll both look at SMP right now. And for the new people here, uh, I'm still going to go over the uh, the daily US 30 strategy. I haven't forgotten about you guys. Um, we're just going to go over, you know, the active questions right now because we can always go back and look at the US 30 strategy because it's already passed. So there's, you know, we can always go back to it at some point. But let me look at S&P real quick. All right, so S&P, same situation. There is a sell entry right here with the, for the K2 pivot strategy. So obviously price is trending down, retracement from here, rejection right here, sell signal. So, oh man, looks dropping. So if you guys are in this trade, you guys are gonna miss this move. I mean, some people took this trade. I know there's people here that took this trade already because they're applying the same strategy. Um, you know, there's no secret behind my strategy. I provide all the indicators. You guys have access to this. You guys have access to all the videos explaining how I trade. Uh, I'm not doing anything different than you guys are doing. So, you know, the K2 members that, you know, actually trade the K2 strategies, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. Like what I'm what I'm looking at here, you guys have access to it. Um, and if you guys want to have access to it, um, feel free to sign up on the website. We still have the trial going on. But yeah, S and P, this looks good. So let me. I'm gonna go on the 30 minute. I'm just gonna see if there's any um, rejection points because those are those are probably gonna be the most important things to look out for, because you don't want to get stuck where price might um, kick you out. So the next support is way down here. So this is actually not that bad. And it actually just broke a support right here. So I'll go on the 10 minute. 
So yeah, if you guys are looking at this trade right here, this is like a nice snipe entry right here. Let's see. Yeah, because it looks like it's gonna come down from this point. So if you guys are taking this trade, uh, it looks like a great sell. Uh, Pipes and Lincoln, if you guys are looking at it. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have access to the indicators, but if you guys do, you guys would have spotted this, um, this pivot entry right here. And it looks real clean. It looks real good because the other indexes are also dropping. You know, US 30 is coming down too. Um, and so is NASDAQ. Wow, this is looking good right here. So all of these, all of the major indices are dropping heavy. So that gives you correlation as to, you know, where price is going to go. So this could give you confirmation that's going to keep dropping right here. And then you probably put your TP uh, because it would probably establish a double bottom at this point. Uh, but Angel said real quick, can you check rejection point for NASDAQ? So NASDAQ real quick. Right here, I'll just pull up the 30 minute SRs. Oh, you're open in the free angel. The rejection point is, is way past the uh, full TP right there. And the upper rejection point is before stop loss. So even if it was to pull back, uh, it, it would probably come back down before um, even hitting it. So yeah, this looks good, Angel, if you're in it. It's dropping really nice, actually. Look look how, yeah, it's such a smooth drop right there. I wish I'd taken it, but uh, you know, like I mentioned, I don't like to trade when I'm on, on, on live because it's kind of, I don't like worrying about my trades and not being able to look at them really quickly. We'll go back to S&P over here. Oh yeah, so Angel said, I think it's 11176. One, 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 the, the next rejection point is down here, actually. So it's about 11096 or 97. Um, let's see, I'm going to look at that price point where you said, could you check rejection point for NASDAQ? Uh, coordinates 11176. Uh, that's kind of a high rejection point. Um, where did you get where did you get that from, Angel? Let me see. Let me pull up the uh yeah, because I don't see it on here. Let me go on the 30 minute. Yeah, I don't see it on here either. Uh I'm not sure how you found that um that rejection point. Because I don't see it on the 30 minute. Or oh, you were on the five actually, right? So let me pull up the five. I don't see it on here either. Uh yeah, I'm not sure how you identify that rejection point, but it doesn't look like. Oh, Angel said, I don't know. I was asking if it was. Oh, yeah, no. So the next rejection point is probably going to be farther down. It's going to be down here at about. So the closest point where, where the zone is, is one. It's 110.96 or 97 to be safe. Um, but yeah, it's got, it's got a long way to go. So it's probably going to push down far enough to reach the rejection point. But at that point, it'll already hit full TP. So there's like nothing to worry about. All right, cool. So that's, uh, that's NASDAQ. Um, so yeah, back to S&P real quick. Yeah, this is looking real good, guys. So yeah, if you guys are in this trade, it looks like it's gonna come down. Just remember to um, move your stop loss once it you know gets like somewhere like halfway in profit. Once it drops down to here, you can see there's a lot of wicks right here. So this might be considered a support area. So as it comes down, just make sure you move your stop loss and profit, guarantee your profits and not stress over your trades. All right, cool. So, all right, Lincoln's next question was NZD USD. Oh yeah, so Lincoln also said, what's the K2 exit strategy? So basically, if you're copying my signals, so let me just go to an example. Let's go to US 30 from today. All right, so US 30 from today was this entry over here. So let me just go back to right, 
at 6.30. 6.30 is when the New York Stock Exchange opened. So once, since I'm here already, I'm just going to show you guys how the uh, the K2 daily US 30 strategy works. Um, because this just goes hand in hand with uh, the exit strategy, since I'm going to explain the exit strategy to, uh, to Lincoln right now. So this is going to be the K2 US 30 daily entry. And this strategy is probably the easiest thing that you guys will ever have to do. Um, so for, for one, you're going to look for trades after I, I need to, uh, emphasize the after because a lot of people get confused with this. Uh, I don't know why, but after New York stock exchange open, a lot of people like to take the, 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 the signal that appears on the open, but I'll, I'll explain to you why we don't take that trade. So that's going to be 6 30 AM Pacific daylight savings time. And then number two, identify the first valid K2 signal after your stock exchange open. And then lastly, you can enter on the open of the following candle. All right, so it's it. there's like no secret to it. The, the, the whole secret to it in the literal sense is the indicator is doing all the work for you because what it does is identifies momentum in the market so first you're going to look for trades after emphasize the after the new york stock exchange open which is 6 30 a.m pacific daylight savings time the reason why we don't take the signal candle if there's a signal on the open is because there's a lot of manipulation when the market opens when the market opens price is usually pushing in a certain direction because there's a bunch of after hour orders that haven't been filled yet because the stock market isn't open 24 hours like uh you know the forest market or you know the other related markets so for this there's a bunch of orders like a bunch of buy orders from last night so as soon as the market opens it shoots up and this is how a lot of people get tricked into fomoing in because look if you're looking at this right here and you see this huge gap up if you see this gap up right here you know what what's a normal person going to do that doesn't know how to trade or that doesn't know what they're doing they're going to follow it because they're going to fomo in they're like oh crap price is going up i got to take a buy right wrong because what happens here is uh this is how the markets trick you they trick new traders to follow follow the money so as they see it's pushing up what do the institutions and the banks do they push it up a little further so you know people think it's going to keep pushing up but then when you least expect it, it comes right back down. And then whoever doesn't know what they're doing gets screwed. And the people that know what they're doing win. <laughs> like, and so this is how the strategy works. So basically first you look for trades after the New York Stock Exchange open, which is 6.30 AM right here. Next, you wanna identify the first valid K2 signal that appears after the New York Stock Exchange open. So right here is the first valid signal, right? Because the market opened right here, there are no signals in between. This is the first valid signal. So the, the way that the strategy works is we're basically waiting for the market to push price in their direction. Because generally, when momentum moves after the market opens, that's where the institutions and the banks are going to keep pushing price for the rest of the day. So right here, we, we you know once we've identified the first valid k2 signal after the new york stock exchange open we've identified the direction for the day so you know obviously we're only going to take cells so right here there's a cell momentum enter on the open of the falling candle right here and we usually have like a 1500 pip um risk to reward ratio and this is from my data like i've back tested this strategy probably like 10 years back so i figured out how much does price usually move during the New York market? And this is a sweet spot. So this is why I set it to this specific price point. I mean, you guys can do whatever you guys want, but you know, I've done my data, I've done my research, um, and this works. So this is why, this is what I do every single day. So once you do that, you let the trade run. And what do you know, full TP. Nothing new there. Um, but yeah, so Lincoln was asking, you know what the exit strategy is so basically the way that the exit strategy works is so here i'm just going to do this right here i'm going to just i'm going to copy the the signal that i sent out so that you guys can see exactly where i placed the uh 
stop loss. There's an arc right there. Arc super happy. Arc came. Arc started off at a rough start, but this dude's been hitting like he's been hitting profits every day, like two thousand a day. Uh, but he wasn't doing so well in the beginning, you know, until he like really practiced and then he he really got it down. Uh, and then he's now he's been killing it, like he's literally been hitting profits every single day. So let's see the the um here's the entry right here. I'm just gonna copy everything over so that there is no difference. All right, so TP1 is going to be, let's mark this up right here. There's TP1, obviously TP2 is gonna be full TP. So there's no need for us to, to do that. But the way that the exit strategy works, Lincoln, is so once price reaches TP1 over here, we move our stop loss to TP1. So let me just push this forward. Price comes up, price comes down. Once it's at TP1 right here, you move your stop loss to this point. And the reason for that is if price is to reverse up, you get stopped out right here. So in that situation, you would have locked in 750 pips, which you know I, I, I wouldn't complain if I got 750 pips because look, if you hit 750 pips, if you're trading standard lot, that's $7,000. If you're trading a mini lot, that's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Like, there's nothing to complain about there. Like, if you make that much profit, then that's cool. Um, so you know, profit is profit. But so right here, once price reaches TP one, I move my stop loss to that specific price point. So in this situation, I can push for full TP, or I can guarantee at least seven hundred and fifty pips. You know, it's all about risk management. A lot of people are too focused on hitting like the home runs and big wins every single time. But you know, that's not the case with trading long-term. Like, yeah, you're gonna hit the home runs like once in a while. But if you keep aiming for that, you don't minimize your risk. You don't know how to manage your trades properly. You're gonna end up with a blown account like a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people don't last in the trading game very long. Uh, you know, the real key in trading is more so just managing risk properly. So let's move it forward. So right there, um, you know, depend. I don't know how price moved at this point, because depending on when you moved your stop loss and profit, if you moved it in profit when it was below, you would have hit full TP. If you moved it, you know, right when this right when this candle closed, you might have gotten stopped out right here. But that's the exit strategy. So basically, what you do is once price reaches TP one or TP two, depending on how many TPs there are. So let like, let's see if there was two TPs. So this is TP one, right? And then this would be TP, let's put TP2 down here. All right, so right here, once price reaches this specific price point, you move your stop loss to TP1 right here. So that, like I mentioned, if price was to reverse on you, you get stopped out on profit. You know, you guys, you can't go broke collecting profit. So right there, um, you would have moved your stop loss to TP, TP1. And then if price drops again further, I mean, this is kind of a bad example because it already hit full TP. But in this situation, if price was to close right here, like in this vicinity without hitting full TP, you would just move your stop loss to your TP2 down here. So in that situation, if it was to reverse on you, you get stopped out in that profit. Um, and you also have the opportunity to reach full TP. It's, it's just, it's, you know, it's basic risk management. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's the exit strategy right there. And this was the... Um, the daily US 30 entry. So this can be used for London session and for New York session. The reason why I don't call London session is because uh, I live in the US, so I, I you know I have to sleep sometimes. <laughs> but uh, if you guys are in the premium, let's see. If you guys are in the premium, Mark, Marcus and Aryan call the, uh, they call the London trades. So let me see when they called it over here. Oh man, we have so many messages. Everyone was like hitting ton of profits today. So, okay, so here's Marcus's call. He said unofficial K2 US 30 London entry. It's the same exact strategy. It's just during London session. So instead of looking for trades after New York Stock Exchange open at 6.30 a.m., we're looking for trades after the London open, which is gonna be at 12 a.m. my time, Pacific Daylight Savings time. So same situation. We'll go to, uh, what was it at? And a lot of people actually made a ton of profit 
taking both of these, you know, I've been taking both of these too. Like on some days I, I end up staying up really late and I can cash this, but sometimes I don't, but okay. So same situation again, right here. It's the same exact strategy. This is like the easiest strategy you'll ever learn and probably the most profitable strategy you'll ever learn as well. So, you know, look for trades after the London open at midnight. This is midnight right here. So this is when the market opened. Um, identify the first valid K2 signal, right? Here's the first valid um, sell signal. And look, this is what I, this is the same thing that I mentioned earlier. So you see on the open right here, the, the banks and institutions trick you because they think you think price is gonna come down, right? But look what happens. If you have the K2 indicator, you have the freaking, you have like the cheat code right here. You know, you don't get tricked with these little moves because you know the direction that the banks are moving. So obviously if you took this trade here, you could have wrote it down, but you know, you're not gonna get tricked with this move right here because obviously like, look, if you're a, a trader that, you know, a novice trader, what does this look like? It looks like a downtrend, right? So what are you gonna do? You're gonna take a sell. You see this dropping, people FOMO in. You know, people, the thing with a lot of people is they wait for price to move down. So they wait for price to move down like this. And then they're like, okay, crap. You know, there's a lot of space here, right? They're like, okay, cool. I, I could ride this down to this point, but look, look what happens here. Price goes down a little bit and then we get our buy signal right there. So we're not tricked because we know that this isn't, you know, this is all manipulated right here. This is the banks trying to trick you to continue to sell. So right here, look for trades after the London open. This is London open for his valid K2 signal right here. Enter on the open right here in our buy position. Same situation, 1500 pips. And then you let it run. Boom, TP. Easy as that. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how much easier can it get. Uh, you know, people took that trade. And then what happened after over here? 630 again right here, right? Boom, another entry right there for, for the US. Same situation, 100, uh, 1500 pips, you hit it both ways. Take the buy, 1500 pips, take the sell, 1500 pips. You know, there's no tricking going on here. Like, you know, you can't, the market can't trick you because you know the direction that they're moving. Um, and, you know, just looking at ARIC, so let's see, let's go to ARIC. I'm sure ARIC doesn't, doesn't really mind. Um, but yeah, so he messaged me this morning he, he actually identified this entry. I wasn't going to take this entry, but he actually took it. So he took it right here. He made 2000 off that trade. Uh, this dude, he, this dude loves the freaking, what are they, Cowboys? Yeah, dude loves the Cowboys. Um, so yeah, he took both of the trades. So he took that buy on London. He made 1300. He took the sell, another 900 right there. Um, and he's just, you know, he's been killing it. Like he wasn't doing so good at the beginning, but then once he actually, you know, put in the work and learned this stuff, he literally started killing it. You know, his first full TP, he was so excited. Uh, I'd be too. Like he identified this trade on his own. Like he saw it and then he took it on his own. I was asleep. So I couldn't even, I didn't even know what he was doing because he was messaging me like at six or like 6 a.m. But I wasn't, uh, I wasn't online, but you know, it's been great for him so far. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, Lincoln, you still want me to look at NU and AU, so I'll pull that up right now. Angel said, what was the stop loss for NASDAQ? So let me pull up NASDAQ over here. All right, cool. So NASDAQ stop loss is at 11305, where you can round that up to 306. Looks like it's retracing up a bit. This is what I mentioned earlier. The problem with um, Asia session is that it's gonna keep bouncing around. So price came down and then it came up. And then it's probably just gonna keep bouncing around from now until until London opens. So it'll probably come up, come down from that point. So there's like, there's, there's really like no reason to get worried. And a lot of people get worried when they see drawdown and people are always like, oh, like how far is drawdown? Uh, I mean, you have to grow thick skin when you trade because there's gonna, there's always going to be drawdown. Like a lot of people ask me, you know, they want a specific number for drawdown. I'm like, bro, you can't predict drawdown. Like, you know, you're not a fortune teller. 
it, it, but if you have these confirmations right here, you can see different areas of rejection. So as long as price is below this pivot, price is below this pivot, below this K2SR, there's nothing to worry about. If price goes above it, then okay, you should worry because it's broken so many different market structures. But if it's below it, I mean, it could come up right here. It could come up right here and then it could shoot back down or it could come up right here and then it could shoot back down. It could even come up way up here and shoot back down. So until price breaks, you know, all of this, all of this market structure, then there's not really too much to worry about. And then, you know, just you, you like worrying about it and staring at the chart while it's going into drawdown, it's just going to stress you out even more. So like the thing with me is when I enter a trade, I don't even look at it anymore. I just set it and I forget it. Um, and that's how I, you know, I took these trades right here, like with my GJ. I just took it and I just leave it alone. I don't even, that's why I have alerts here. So I have alert here if I hit stop loss and I'm like, all right, well, I hit stop loss. If I hit CP, all right, I hit CP. Same situation with, you know, NC over here. Like it's going down, but I'm not looking at it. Cause the more that you look at your trade, the more, no, the more tempted you're going to be to exit it. And if you exit it too early, you're going to get mad at yourself for exiting that trade. Um, here we are with AU right here. We're still in some drawdown. You know, if, if I exited at TP2 up here for like, what was it, like 27 pips, I would have been out in profit. But, you know, I, don't, I just don't want to stress it. So I'm letting it do it what it, what it does. And then I'll check on it when I get an alert. Uh, okay, so let's go back to uh, NU. So Lincoln said, have you looked at NU? We haven't looked at NU yet, so we'll take a look. All right, so it's 5.30 right now, guys, in about um, in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna start looking for trades. So I'm just gonna look, I'll, I'll analyze until then, but once it gets closer to 5.40, I'm gonna take a break from analyzing stuff, and then I'm going to look for trades. So here we are with NU. We got the naked chart right here. I'll pull up the K2SRs. Draw my zones. All right, another zone right here. big zone and then the last one right over here all right when it's like a big zone like uh let's see i mean actually we could probably connect these two or at least see how much space it's in between yeah we could just connect these two because they're um it's one big zone there we go once i have the zones i hide the srs and there you go, we have a huge area right here. So once we have these zones plotted out, you can see where price is likely to reject from. You can see price came down, rejected off this point, came up, rejected off this point, came back down, rejected right here. So what's gonna happen here is probably gonna push up. Um, or it could come down. I mean, it, it, there, there's a lot of different scenarios. There's never just one scenario, uh, but it's good to, analyze it from all perspectives. So you have a good understanding as to where price is going to go. So right here, we have the rejection points. On top of that, we are going to add the pivots so we can identify the trend. Um, it looks like price is attempting to come down, but it hasn't confirmed yet. Let's check momentum. All right, so right here, you can see that we have a sell momentum candle but it's opposite. So if it's an invalid signal, you know, odds are price is probably going to correct back up because after this invalid sell signal, you know, what follows after that is going to be a buy signal. So if this closes in the next 30 minutes and then we get another buy signal like this right here, then it's probably going to shoot up. And that's probably what I'm hoping for because we have a buy for odd USD. So, you know, these, those pairs correlate. So I want this to go up. So me personally, because you know I have a personal interest in this trade, I'm, I have a sell, I have a buy bias. 
even though it looks like price is trying to swing downwards, I still have a buy bias because I personally want it to go up. So the thing here is that it could literally go either direction because what's happening here is if this is an invalid signal, like I mentioned, it could shoot up. However, if it's a, you know, a valid signal like a sell right here, it could come down. But we're not really going to know until this candle closes in the next 29 minutes. So we probably would have to just give it some time, see where it closes out. Uh, if it does close invalid like this, which I'm hoping it does because it rejected off this, this zone right here, um, then we could, we could analyze this for a buy. Um, but currently, it just looks like price is indecisive. Look at the trend meter down here. This shows the overall trend on four different time frames. You can see that it's blue. So if it's blue, that means that price is consolidating or it's indecisive. So obviously right here it was green, right? Nice trend up. It was red right here, nice trend down. Blue went sideways. Blue went sideways until it dropped a little bit, went into a downtrend. It's blue right now, so it's going sideways. It could either correct back up or shoot back down. So in this situation here, it's just a matter of time. You just have to wait for some sort of confirmation. You know, Generally, I don't like to trade when price is going sideways, but you, you can see right there that disappeared, right? So we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. You know, if it disappears and it doesn't show up as an invalid signal, that's a good thing. But it's also a good thing if, if it's an invalid signal because that's just showing that the bears are trying to take over, but the bulls aren't letting them. So, you know, it's closing with the momentum downwards, but with a bullish candle. So if this happens here, we have a rejection and it's still sell. I mean, it's still a, a green candle then this can give confirmation of the rejection right here and bullish move to follow. Because if this happens, it'll establish a higher low. So we have a, a low right here, a high right here, higher low, and if it shoots up, that'll be a higher high. And then that will confirm a swing and trend upwards. And then as price breaks above here, it'll be above the pivots, and then it'll just be a trend continuation upwards because look at price on a bigger scale. NZD USD is still continuing upwards because the US dollar is weak. So this is what I'm anticipating right here and what I'm hoping for because we're in a buy for odd USD. So this is my analysis for NZD USD. I'll pull up odd USD now. Same situation because they're very they're very similar pairs. You'll see that they look exactly the same. See, if you look at this from bird's eye view, nice trend up. Look at NU over here. It's kind of like the same exact pair. I mean, obviously there's going to be different movements because the NZD and, and odd, odd USD aren't, um, they're not exactly the same, but they're very similar. So there's the analysis for NZD right there. Let's go to AUD right now. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I just did for NU. Just hide everything. Um, we've got our naked chart right there. First thing we're going to do is identify the rejection points. So zoom out. Let's go from the bottom up so it's a lot easier. Rejection point. Rejection point. And this is so easy, guys. So if you guys have access to the K2 indicators, you can see how easy it is for me to analyze a trade. Like, it, you know, if you get good at these at these indicators, you can easily analyze a, a trade in a few minutes or like in a minute or so, depending on, you know, how on how um, how difficult the, the, the pair is. Because some pairs they don't really move very much and they consolidate. So you're not going to find easy zones to identify like this. Um, however, if you, you're, you know, you're trading a pair like this where it's kind of easy to identify, um, it, it's not really difficult at all. Let's see how many pips are in here. Generally, I like a 20 pip uh, space in between. So like, like if these were merged right here and it was only 20 pips, then I would just connect them together. But it's 40 pips, so I'm gonna leave it alone. So once we have the zones plotted, 
uh, I'll take off the SRs and then now you can see how clean it looks, where price rejects from. So you can see right here, price came down, rejected, came up, came back down, rejected off this point, came back up. Um, it looks like it might come down a little further. If not, if it didn't already reject off this point, so it might come down a little further. It could either break above right now where it currently is, and it, this would be the rejection point because it doesn't look like there's an SR here. But if you're eyeballing it, you can see that this point right here actually has been tested in the past. See, you can see right here, it's tested it at this point. This is kind of like a double bottom. So price came up, rejected off this point, came down, rejected off the same exact point right there. And then looking back in the past, it's rejected here a couple of times too. One, two, three, four, five. So what could happen here with odd USD is, I mean, obviously I want it to move up because we're in a buy. So I want it to shoot up here. But you know, worst case scenario, it'll come down where it currently is, test the K2SR, and then shoot up. But I mean, there's, there's really no way to really know until it actually happens. Uh, so the thing is, we still have 20 minutes left on this on this candle. So, you know, a lot can happen in 20 minutes. Price could push up and then close above here. And then once it does that, it could skyrocket up. Um, but it just really depends on, on, you know, where this candle closes. Because the thing is, if it closes below here, then it could probably just go sideways until London open. It just really depends on, on you know, where price is going to be at that specific time um, once we get closer to London open. So same situation right here with, uh, you know, NU. I do have a buy bias here. Um, I also have a buy bias for AU because we're in that trade currently. So this is the trade here, actually. Yeah, so it, it's basically, it's just in consolidation at this time. You can see that the pivots are crossing over. It's trying to drop. But, you know, like I mentioned over here, even though it's trying to drop, it might, the farthest will probably drop is to like that zone. And then it might shoot upwards. But we'll just have to give it time because, you know, like I mentioned, we're in Asia session. So we're probably not going to see too much movement from now until London. Unless there's news. Was there news today? Let's see. No, it looks like we're good. Tomorrow there's news at 5 a.m. Um, or 5.30 a.m. So horrible. Um, but there's all day news for Euro tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, that's AU and NU. Uh, I do have a buy bias, but we're just gonna have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, but yeah, guys, so that looks like that's it for the questions, guys. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, it's about 5.40 right now, so I'm gonna start looking for trades off the six hour candle close. Um, and then we can, um, you know, I can go over any, any other questions you guys have, or I can just analyze, you know, what we're looking at now. But yeah, the, the Q&A box is open, guys. If you guys have any questions, there's nothing, um, there's no pending questions right now. So I'm just going to analyze. Um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to just put them in there. And then I'll answer them once I'm done scanning the charts. And if you guys don't know where the, um, the Q&A box is, uh, there's usually like an option right there on the side. It says Q&A. And then there's like message windows next to it. So just click on that and then just type in your question right there. But yeah, so I already I've already drawn up the zones for a lot of these pairs because I've been analyzing these like all week. Uh, let's see. So this has a buy bias right here. This would have been an entry for a for a pivot entry right here. It would have hit CP right there, forty five pips. Um, but it's it's still continuing up. The, that there wouldn't be another entry until, you know, there's a sell signal like this right here and then followed by a buy signal. Well, we currently don't have that right now, so no entry there for AC. So we'll just have to keep looking for other pairs. I keep forgetting it's Thursday too, so that's why the market's slowing down as well. You know, we're getting closer to the weekend, so 
you know, if we don't have any trade today, you know, I wouldn't be surprised uh, because the market's starting to slow down for the weekend. A lot of people are pulling out already, um, getting ready for the weekend. So it doesn't look like there's very much here. Odd JPY. So I would, let me turn off that alert. We're not looking at can you NASDAQ anymore. It keeps coming up. All right, so right here, there'd be an entry if there is a, a sell signal that appears. There's no sell signal right now. So that's something we'd have to wait for. I did mark it with a pending, just so I can come back and look at it as we get closer to 6 p.m. Odd NZD, nothing here. Uh, we do have a buy momentum right here. This technically would have been a buy entry, but uh, I didn't want to call it because it's so close to this, this next zone for only six pips. So like I mentioned, you know, if, if price was to shoot back up, odds are it's probably going to reject off that point. So last thing you want to do is enter a trade and then get caught in this. And, you know, if that was to happen, uh, you'd be screwed because the six pip movement right here, you'd barely be able to cover like two, like maybe less than two pips because it spread to 4.5. Uh, so that's something you guys have to factor in as well. All right, odd USD. We're in this trade right now. We're in some drawdown, but it looks fine. I mean, yeah, personally, I you know I should have followed my own rules and used the active strategy, but I didn't. But so it's fine. I mean, I took the risk, so I'm gonna hang on to it. CAD CHF. So it's within this zone right here. What's probably gonna happen is price comes up, test the zone right here, the upper zone, and then continue down. See the SR levels. Yeah, there's a ton of zones right here. You can see that rejection. It came down and tested the zone. So usually when it's in, within a zone, I don't like to take trades because the problem with this is it's probably just going to keep, you know, bouncing around, shoot up, shoot down, shoot up, and then until it breaks out below or above. So no entry there for CAD CHF. CAD JPY. Nothing there. Like I mentioned, you know, I don't like trading where the zones are because the last thing you want to do is enter a sell position and then it reverses on you. CHFJPY. It uh, doesn't look like there's anything here. Um, obviously, it's in an uptrend. So what I would what I would have wanted to see is I wanted to see price close below into the zone and then close above it. Because once it does that, it provides for an entry. And then you could have rolled this up somehow. But no entry there. You know, that, that's, the, that's the main key with, with um, like lasting and trading and, and taking quality trades. It, it's all about patience. A lot of people want to just enter trades because they think price is going to go a certain direction. But the problem with that is price can always retrace on you. So just be patient. That, that's like the biggest tip that I can give anyone. <laughs> Because I know a lot of people don't have patience waiting for trades. Euro odds. So this would have been a, I mean, technically it might have been a buy entry, but um, this in consolidation right here. So price was trending down, price tried to reverse up, and then it came back down, and then it came back up, and it's probably going to come back down. So it's literally just going sideways until it finds a direction, until it breaks above here or breaks below here. Or not even there, probably farther down there. So yeah, that looks. I mean, it would look good if it would break a, break into one direction, but uh, there's just nothing available right there. Euro CAD. I mean, this would have been a pivot entry right here. So, you know, if you guys are, I mean, you guys are familiar with the pivot strategy. I went over it like five times today. So. You know, basically price was trending up right here. Uh, retrace, rejection, buy signal. Uh, this would have been a buy inch right there. And then it would have hit TP. But it's still a little, it's just a little too, um, I mean, we, we, we would miss a trade. Like if, if we took that trade, then yeah, it would have been good, but we didn't. So in order for there to be another entry, we would have to get a, a sell signal in this direction like this and then another buy signal like this somewhere over here, and then we could enter a buy at that point. But there's nothing there, so we're gonna skip that for now. Euro CHF. 
All right, cool. So we have a cell signal right here, but the reason why we wouldn't have taken this was because it's at a K2SR zone right here. And what happens when it reaches the K2SR zone? It rejects off it, and that's what's happening right here. So that's why we wouldn't have taken this trade, even though it would have qualified for a pivot entry. I mean, it might come down, you know, we just don't know when. Like it might come down at some point because it's a trend down. Uh, you know, we got the retracement, rejection, sell signal. Um, but yeah, we would have to wait for some sort of extra confirmation before we decide to take something like that. EG right here, um, let's see. Sierra's not here. Sierra took this trade yesterday. So on, I mean, not yesterday, on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, uh, we went over this in the webinar. We saw that price, actually it wasn't even this trade, it was this one right here, because it was today's the 10th, so the webinar was on the 8th. Um, there was a entry right here. This is where Sierra took it. And then it had full TP right there for 80 pips. And then I think there was a couple other people here that, um, let me look at the chat real quick. Yeah, what's his name? Oh, Furkan, he, uh, this dude is tripping this morning. He was like, bro, I'm in negative. He was like negative 2000. Cause I don't, I don't know why he took a, a trade up here, but then he, uh, he used one of the strategies and he ended up in profit. So he went from negative 2000 to 844 in profit. Um, I'm trying to work on uh, Turkish subtitles for him cause he wants to learn the strategy too. So if anyone here knows how to translate Turkish, uh, you know, he might be of use to K2. <laughs> But yeah, so he, I don't know why he took the trade up here. He took a, a sell or a buy up here. And I told him not to chase the money. So he was like tripping out because he was like negative 2000. But then I told him to hang on to it. So he hung on to it and then he made a profit back, which, you know, it's great. Because, you know, last thing I want is for any K2 member to be negative or to get close to blowing their account. Uh, but yeah, so nothing there for EG because it's way too up. Uh, if we were to get a sell signal, like a retracement signal, like something like this right here, and then we got a buy signal, then I would take a buy, but nothing for EG right now. All right, so let's see, Euro JPY. Uh, it's within a zone right now, so I personally would wait for, and, and then it's an invalid sell right there, so I'd wait for it to break below here, like it did right here. So if this happens again right here, then I would take a sell because look at this. So if you took that right there, it went in profit about 60 pips. So that could happen again, uh, but we would just have to wait for it to break below. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, it's Thursday, it's getting close to a uh, market close for the weekend. So that's why we don't have very many trade opportunities right now. And not even just that, um, it's also, it's also an Asia session. So we're not really anticipating very much movement though currently. All right, your USD, this looks great. It's, it's shooting up and that's what we want because we have a buy for odd USD. I want the USD to stay weak. Uh, G, I look at GA, right? Oh yeah, so this is GA right here. Technically this would have been an entry down here. I didn't call it because this is a huge move. Like usually when this happens, Price generally has to, you know, fill a gap a little bit before coming back down. But it looks like it could be coming down already. GC. Same situation here. Like all of the GBP pairs dropped pretty hard. And I didn't want to call them because they were just way too risky. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of glad I didn't because we'd be literally at break even right now. For all of these, because or some of them would have dropped, so GC would have dropped, GA would have dropped a little bit. GBP CHF is pretty much going sideways, but here we are with a GJ. So GJ is a little different because it's paired with the with the yen, and the US dollar was actually strong this morning, so that's why we took the sell because I was like, okay, if the US dollar is strong, I mean, sorry, the US dollar was weak because we were we had a buy for odd USD. So if the U.S. dollar was weak, I, I was correlating that with the JPY. So if you know if the U.S. dollar is weak, the yen is usually stronger, and that's why it's dropping right now. So that's why we're in this trade. I'm not going to call another one because we're already in it. GN, same situation here. If you look at all the GBP pairs, they're all dropping pretty hard. So GA is dropping, GC is dropping, GCH, GCH, GCHF. 
I'll just call it the pound Swiss. It's easier. I mean, pound Swiss. The um, yeah, actually, that was the pound Swiss. The pound Swiss is dropping. GCAD's dropping. GJ's dropping. GN's dropping. All the GBP pairs are are pretty much dropping, even GU. So, actually, no. GU has been bouncing around, but you can see that the the pound is really weak. I'm not sure if something happened in the market. I haven't been following the news today. But yeah, the, the, the pound is just crazy weak. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's fine as long as it keeps dropping. That's cool because we have the sell for TJ. And then if the if the yen is strong, then the Swiss franc is probably be strong too. So we're both in sells for those two trades. Both looking good. NCD CAD is just consolidating sideways. NJ, nothing there. And you, nothing there. It's too close to the zones. You CAD, nothing there. And UCHF. Uh, this could be a good sell right here, but the problem is it might be too. Uh, well, if this isn't close to the invalid signal, but the problem with this is it's too close. So see right here, it's only 13 pips. So the problem with this is it's not going to. It's not going to be enough cushion for you to really make any profit off this. You're, you're risking more than your your profit potential is. Oh, Ken said the Brexit talk was not good. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now. So Brexit's screwing up again. That's why the the pound is super weak, which is perfect for us because it works out for all of our open positions. I should have called this for a late entry. I don't know why I didn't call it. I mean, it's too late now. Let's see, it's in profit. Damn, it's probably like 30, 40 pips. Yeah, so whoever was applying the strategy themselves, for this strategy, I use a little combination. So I use the um, I use the K2 SR zone trading strategy, but it usually lines up with the pivot strategy on the intraday setting. So I use both of those together. If they both line up perfectly, then more likely than not, the trade's gonna be 100%. Like right here, this would have been a, a pivot entry. It's also a zone entry. So if I was to take this entry right here, it's almost like a guarantee win. Uh, GU, uh, like I mentioned, see all the all the GB pairs are are pretty heavy down. So I think that was it. We looked at everything here. UC, UCAD, UCHF. Um, yeah, it doesn't look look like there's really anything to take right now. So we'll probably just wait till the 10, like the 10 p.m. candle, the next four-hour candle, and we'll see if there's more movement. Um, but if there's no entries, you know, that's completely fine. We've had a phenomenal week. I don't think we – have we had any losses this week? I don't think we did. Uh, aside from the NASDAQ call that was on Sunday, that was my bad. I was just scalping, so I called that. Probably shouldn't have, but um, I think everything else has been TP. Like, just looking at the – if you look at our results, it's literally been TPs all week long. Um and, you know, that, that just shows consistency there. But let me go back to the Q&As. We have a couple more questions here from, we had a question from Lincoln said, how come you usually put a buy stop or limit instead of market execution? So the reason why I put a buy stop or market execution, I mean, buy stop or, or buy limit is because if you look at all the strategies, they all advise to enter on the, open uh, on the close of the following candle. So if this was the, the close of the candle, we'd enter after it. The problem with me putting a market execution is if I put market execution and someone enters this trade an hour later and price is already way down here, they're gonna get in at the wrong price point. And then they're gonna get mad because they missed all this profit or they entered at a loss. Um, so that's why we have a specific price point because if you don't get in at that price point, then you've missed the trade. You know, it's, it, there's no biggie because you know we have more trades coming. It's not like one trade a day or like one trade a month or a week. Uh, if you miss one trade, that's fine. Just you know, wait for the next one. But that's the main reason why I never give market executions because it doesn't matter what I what I share. If I ever put a market execution, someone will see that trade like two days later, and for whatever reason, they think it's okay to enter that trade still. So they enter it. And price, we've already hit TP, we're out of the trade. They're like, oh, your signal said to enter market execution. I'm like, no, bro, it said, <laughs> you know, this trade was sent like two days ago. Why, why would you think that? But then, you know, that's been an issue in the past. So that's why I never do 
market market execution anymore um, because I don't want people to get confused because if I put a price point and you try to enter that trade like two days later and price is like way down here, it's impossible to, to enter that trade. Um, and you know, it's just, it's just to protect the traders because some traders are new and they don't understand how everything works. So if you put market execution, they're gonna enter that trade maybe a month later or something like that. So that's the main reason why we have a specific entry point every single time. Um, let's see. Angel said, can you please show us an example of how to confirm the price has officially reversed? Okay, cool. So one way to do it is, so see this right here with, with GJ? Angel, so with GJ right here, you can see price was trending up, right? I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So price was trending up and then price crossed right here, right? So as it crossed, here, I'll just re replay it to this point. So price broke above, it crossed below, and then you can see the pivots are starting to cross the other direction, right? So right here, you can see that the pivots are starting to reverse. So now instead of it trending up, the pivots are now angling down and price is below the pivots. So this is gonna be one confirmation. This is like, okay, you should probably start to get worried because price is below the pivots and the pivots are starting to angle in the other direction. Your next confirmation, is if price breaks and retests in a K2SR zone. So right here, you can see price is trying to break this zone. It hasn't broken it yet, right? You can see right there, it's still fighting its way back up. It wants to come back up. You can see right here, it's having a hard time. It's consolidating. And then right here, it breaks and closes below. Once it does this, this is almost, I'm not gonna say guaranteed because there's never any guarantees, but this is more likely than not, that price has reversed because one confirmation is that the, the pivots are now angling downwards um, and it's, you know, it's confirming a downwards trend. But on top of that, price has broken, retested the K2SR zone. So this is considered a market structure. So if price is trending the opposite direction and it's confirmed a break and close past market structure, odds are price is probably gonna continue downwards, right? And look what happens here. That's exactly what happened. So this is one way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's not just one way, but this is how I look at it. Um, let me see if there's another one right here. So this is a different one right here. This is this wouldn't count because see, price was trending up, then price cost. Well, let me just rewind it to this point, just so that we can. The reason for this is because price rejected off this pivot, right? I mean, off this K2SR. And like I mentioned before, whenever price rejects off a K2SR, especially when it's a clean rejection like that, you can see right here, it's basically a double bottom, right? If that happens, odds are price is gonna continue back upwards. And look what happens here. Price consolidates a little bit, and then it shoots up, right? So that's, that's what's different between that and this right here. See, because right here, price, the pivots cross, right? So that's the first confirmation. Then price broke and closed below the K2SR. The, the difference here is price never rejected off the zone right here. On this area over here, price rejected right off the zone. It was literally on point and then it shot up. If we got a rejection like this wick, reached out to the zone right here, and then we got a rejection, then that's a whole different story. Because if there's a rejection at this point, then odds are it's gonna shoot upwards. But there's no rejection here. It didn't even reach the zone. And look what happens next. It breaks right through it. So that's why this is different from this right here. Because this gives you confirmation of a double bottom because there's a rejection right here, rejection right here, then it shoots up. Right here, price, price breaks below, but there's no rejection. So that's why it shoots farther. And then it just keeps going down. But it's really subjective, Angel. I mean, the, you know, this is something that you'll learn practicing every day. I'm sure you've learned a lot using the K2 strategies. You know, the more and more that you use the K2 indicators, the more patterns you'll see. Because you'll see the same thing happens every single time. Price comes up, rejects off the zone, comes down, rejects off the zone, 
buy signal, pivot entry. Nice entry right there, right? Uh, and you, if you keep doing this every single day, you're, it's going to be second nature to you. You're going to be like me where you can just look at the chart and you're like, all right, cool. It's going to go in that direction or it's going to consolidate or it's going to go down. You know, it's just going to practice makes perfect. So the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Sure, no problem. Pipes, Pipes said, geez, Sean, got to go right now. Thanks for the amazing webinar. Bless up. Cool. Yeah, we'll see you again next time, Pipes. All right, we have one last question from Lincoln. So Lincoln said, London and New York US 30 signals are taken off the 10 minute. Yeah, they are because for that strategy, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's, um, I, I don't know if you were here earlier, Lincoln, but so I think you came in later, but for the specific strategy, um, I back tested the 10 minute about 10 years back. So I found the 10 minute to be way more accurate. Um, the five minute, obviously you'll get more entries and you'll get earlier entries, but it's less accurate because it's on a lower time frame. The 15 minute, you'll get less entries and they're a little more accurate, but you'll be entering them a little later. So right here, you can see that, you can see that the entry after 6.30 is right here, right? On the 10 minute. I'm just gonna show you the difference between the 10 minute and the, um, the five minute. So this is the 10 minute right there, right? We'll switch to the five minute. The signal is a little higher. So you could have made a little more profit up here, but it's a little riskier. If you enter about, let's see, about an hour earlier from the 10 minute entry. And then looking at the 15 minute, same difference, it's just lower. So you would have missed out on like 600 pips, I think, or something like that. Um, but yeah, you know, when you apply that strategy, the specific strategy was based on a 10 minute chart. So if you go on the Facebook channel or on the course, so if you go to, um, if you're on the K2 course, you just go to the, where is it set up at? Where is that? Oh, there we go. So the K2 daily US 30 strategy, it'll show you in detail how I apply it. But I always advise to use it on the 10 minute. That's that's the best time frame to um, to apply that specific strategy. Uh, but yeah, guys, so it looks like that's about it. it looks like that's it for the questions. So um, yeah, I hope you guys got some value out of this webinar. Um, you know, just a reminder, if you guys have access to the K2 indicators, I'm always available to get on a one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Um, you guys just have to schedule a time with me. Um, you know, the time get booked pretty quickly. So make sure to you know check in with me and then we can book you know, whatever's the earliest time, if not the week after. Uh, but generally I'm booked at least like two weeks ahead of time. So just try to book with me ASAP. Um, if I do have time, I could squeeze in some time for you. Uh, otherwise, if you want your full hour, we'll just find a time that works for both of us. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for showing up. Uh, if you guys are new here and you guys want access to the indicators, you can go on our website, k2trades.com and, you know, get access to it here. If you just want the free course, you can click on that. And then you'll have access to all the K2 groups, uh, basically all the free K2 chats. Um, and then you'll have access to the course. You just won't have access to the indicators. So, you know, that's that's where the bulk of the value is. If you guys have the indicators, uh, you guys can trade exactly how I do. I don't do anything differently. Uh, I do everything that's taught. So if you guys want to be consistently profitable traders, um, it's available to you. Uh, but yeah, guys, so this will be on YouTube shortly. Uh, thanks for showing up, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the chat. See you guys later.